Throughout Sonic Adventure 2's story, there's a subplot that develops about who or what the true ultimate life form is. Whether it be Shadow, the Bio Lizard, or Sonic, in classic Sonic Team fashion, the writers leave it up to the players to decide who it can be. I know Shadow continues to carry the moniker in future games, but in my opinion, that's all it is. Him calling himself the ultimate life form doesn't mean that he truly is, or that there can't be more than one. Let's look at a few things to reach a conclusion about who the true ultimate life form is. I'll be looking at the mural from Sonic 3 and K, some beta elements from SA2, Chaos Energy along with the fake yellow emerald used to stop the Eclipse Cannon, and the feats accomplished by Sonic and Shadow. We'll stick to SA2 when looking at these feats because Shadow barely gets anything after Sonic 06 and the only other games that show off his power are that game, Heroes, and Shadow the Hedgehog so it would be unfair to use everything because Sonic's catalog is much longer. The mural from Sonic 3 and K depicts a dark blue hedgehog outlined by a golden aura taking on a machine monstrosity. This prophecy is immediately fulfilled when Sonic takes back the Master Emerald from Eggman at the end of the game. But what if this same mural was used to inspire someone else in Eggman's family? Gerald Robotnik created two beings with the goal of creating the ultimate life form, the Bio Lizard and Shadow the Hedgehog. Interestingly, the Bio Lizard has the same roar as Perfect Chaos when fighting Shadow, and a distorted mix of Sonic and Shadow screams when it becomes the final hazard. I believe this all ties together in a lore sense. I believe that Gerald Robotnik either went to Angel Island, as well as the Mystic Ruins, or sent a group of researchers to gather intel for him. While in these places, they saw the Hidden Palace mural and the Perfect Chaos mural and reported back to the professor, who then experimented with the details of these murals when creating the ultimate life form. The idea of Professor Gerald or researchers he was working with traveling to Angel Island or the Mystic Ruins isn't too far-fetched as in Sonic Battle, Gerald began experimenting with Emerald after finding the robot in a warehouse. Emerald was a robot designed to use the seven emeralds over 4,000 years ago. Originally, it was supposed to be the Nocturnus clan seen in Sonic Chronicles that would be the ones who created Emerald, but thankfully, that game isn't canon. So I swapped out the possible fourth great civilization Gerald mentions in Sonic Battle to be the agents seen in Sonic Frontiers, seeing as how the agents also used emeralds to power their machines, and emerald has a similar look to chaos. As for how this all connects back together, the agents turned into Chao. The Chao and the Knuckles clan lived near each other as seen in Sonic Adventure, so it's safe to assume that emerald was not too far off from where the Mystic Ruins were. To circle back to the mural theory, let's look at Shadow's concept art for Sonic Adventure 2. Both versions of this shadow share some likenesses to the hedgehog in the mural. This one features a dark blue fur color much like the mural hedgehog, while the other design that more closely resembles Shadow features the unique hairstyle meant to reflect the hedgehog's super state. Sadly, the writer for SA2 and Shadow's creator, Shiro Mayakawa, has confirmed that this mural theory isn't true because he doesn't really like the Genesis era Sonic and Shadow was entirely derived from one of his favorite manga titled Please Save My Earth, which becomes obvious when you compare the characters both Shadow and Maria are based on. I usually stick to what's true when it comes to creating my headcanons, but the mural theory is too much on the nose for me to simply disregard. It's too coincidental. Before I talk about the importance of the Yellow Emerald, I have to explain what Chaos Energy is. It's a simple concept, so I wouldn't be surprised if you already knew what I'm going to say here, but it's important. Chaos energy, as I see it, refers to the power gained from continued exposure and or the use of both the Seven Emeralds as well as the Master Emerald. We see that this is a real thing, because in Sonic Adventure, Chaos was once a Chao, who evolved back into the Ancients form due to having prolonged exposure to the Emeralds at the Shrine compared to the other Chao. Chaos energy is seen throughout the games even before Adventure 1. Knuckles knocks Sonic out of his super state and while it was by surprise, it was no small feat. He absolutely had enough power to do this due to being the Master Emerald's guardian. Sonic also gets stronger through prolonged emerald use and exposure. His quills during his super state have become more uniform over time, something that I believe means Sonic gains more controlled use of the emeralds. I believe Chaos Energy is what allows Sonic to eventually use the light speed dash without an upgrade, defeat Perfect Chaos without going super again, track Shadow as he uses Chaos Control to teleport behind him in their first meeting, and use the fake yellow emerald to Chaos Control his way out of an explosive space pod. Chaos Energy is also how Shadow extends his use of all seven emeralds in his super state in Shadow the Hedgehog, as using them in Adventure 2 and being near them in Heroes and in Shadow increases his own abilities. I thought I would have much more to say about the Yellow Emerald, 
It was created by Tails to cause machine malfunction if used by one. Since it's a Chaos Emerald but weaker, that means that Emerald can also be used for other purposes such as Chaos Control. Shadow thinks out loud, saying that Sonic shouldn't have been able to use the Chaos Control with the fake Emerald. I don't believe Eggman ever tells Shadow that Emerald's fake. He just knows due to being created by the original Seven. The truth is that Sonic's Chaos Energy Reserves were greater than Shadow's and it was on display for the entire game. The most notable example of this being during the final Hazard boss fight. Shadow is unable to sustain his super form and even tells Sonic that the Blue Hedgehog just might be the true ultimate life form, which is part of a thread line previously brought up by Rouge who questions if Shadow is truly the ultimate life form, to which Shadow remarks that he doesn't care because Shadow is what's real to him. So while Shadow carries the moniker of the ultimate life form, he can acknowledge that someone else can also have claim to the title, or choose to disregard it altogether. Let's run down some feats between Sonic and Shadow in Adventure 2. Shadow's ability to use Chaos Control is put over strongly throughout the entire game. His ability to use it at almost any time as long as he has an emerald, as well as its range is also incredibly impressive. Shadow has never seen using Eggman's transporter in his base to reach the arc, the very first time Shadow and Eggman meet up there, it's easy to conclude that he used Chaos Control, which is insane seeing as how the Space Colony arc is in Earth's orbit in space. He also defeats the Biolus by himself the first time. Shadow's feats in Adventure 2 are honestly more impressive than Sonic's. The Blue Hedgehog manages to defeat Gun's version of Metal Gear, track Shadow's movements through Chaos Control teleportation, uses the fake Emerald to activate Chaos Control for himself for the very first time, and beats Shadow in their second fight. The ultimate thing that makes it close is Sonic being able to use his super form and being able to withstand chaos control in his super form. This makes the power between Sonic and Shadow somewhat even, as while Sonic's super state is stronger, Shadow's innate ability is more impressive. So, who is the ultimate life form between Sonic and Shadow? My personal answer is Sonic. When taking into account my headcanon of Shadow being based off the mural prophecy in Sonic 3, that was later fulfilled by Sonic, Sonic being able to use the fake Emerald to Chaos Control out of the space pod, and the fact that Sonic manages to keep up with Shadow throughout the entire game and then outpace him by the end leads me to believe that Sonic is the true ultimate life form. However, if you have Shadow as your ultimate life form, that's fine too. He does carry the moniker, and despite reaching his limit by the end of SA2, his own power was on full display throughout the entire game, and witnessing it makes Shadow an impressive being in his own right, who says there can't be two ultimate life forms. No need to pit two bad bitches against each other, or whatever J. Cole said. Shout out to y'all for watching. Felt good to get back in my Sonic Theory bag for a bit. If you want to see more Sonic Theories, click the links on the screen, and check out my channel for more Sonic goodness. I'm out. Peace.